Hello winos, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine, a retailer and a consultant. And this is my channel where we are thirsty for knowledge and wine. And this channel has changed. I took some time off of YouTube and I decided to do this channel in English from now on. I just want to reach as many people as possible and get them interested in wine and English is the right language to do that in. But I'm sorry for the bad German accent. So this is Wine in 10, where I tell you everything you need to know about a region or a grape variety in 10 minutes. This time I want to talk about one of the most distinct and special wine growing regions in the world, the Mosel. So let's do this. Mosul was once called Mosul Saar River because it consists of those three rivers. But now the Bestimmte Anbaugebiet, the AOP, is only called Mosul. The Mosul produces some of the most highly regarded wines in Germany and it's one of those regions that I found quite easy to identify in a blind tasting. This is because the wines are super aromatic, fresh, have bright acidity and often come with some residual sugar. But why do the wines taste the way they taste? So I kind of tried to answer that question for you by looking at the history, the climate, the viticulture and winemaking and the geography of the region. So the Mosul has been producing wine for a long, long time. Roughly 2000 years ago, the Romans brought viticulture into the region. The first documented winemaking started in 17 BC when the Romans set up the city of Trier. When the Romans left, the monks took over winemaking. Quite interestingly, the Cistercians came from Burgundy to the Mosul in the Middle Ages and brought all of their experience into the region. This is maybe also why the vineyards of the Mosul are as parcelated and as well understood as the vineyards in Burgundy. At the end of the 19th century, the wines from the Mosul were more popular, more famous and more expensive than the top wines from Burgundy and Bordeaux. Still, when you visit the Mosul today, some of the owners will bring out wine lists from that period and show you that the Mosul wines were actually the most expensive wines on the list. In the 20th century, however, the overall quality declined and the quantity coming out of the Mosul increased quite significantly. Things have changed since then. In the last few decades, the quantity of production has decreased in the Mosul and the quality has increased significantly. And the most expensive white wine in the world is a Mosul wine again. The 2003 Egon Müller Schatzhofberger Trockenbeerenauslese, which sold for 12,000 euros at an auction a few years ago. Today, the region is dedicated to white grape varieties again. 90% of all vineyards are planted to white varietals. But in the 18th century, many villages were still producing red wine. And in the 19th century, Elpling was the most popular grape variety, covering roughly two thirds of all vineyards in the Mosul. Today, Riesling is king though. 62% of all of the vineyards are planted to the greatest German grape variety. Riesling has been cultivated in the Mosul since the Middle Ages. So there's a long, long relationship between the grape variety and the region. And in the rivers of the Saar and the Ruwe, actually more than 80% of all vineyards are planted to Riesling. Distant second and third are Müller Thurgau with roughly 10% of all vineyards and Elpling with 5% of all vineyards planted to that grape variety. The Mosel is one of the most important Bestimmte Anbaugebiete in Germany with 8,700 hectares. When it comes to viticulture, the Mosel is quite special. It has super steep slopes and it also has the steepest vineyard in Europe, the Bremer Kalmund. The Bremer Kalmund is super steep. It's very difficult to get up there and it's also very difficult to get down again, in one piece at least. In those steep vineyards, a very common way of growing the vines is the Moselfall at Zion, where every vine has a pole to grow on and there are no wires. The sites are very rocky in most places and that is why some of the areas don't have any phylloxera and you can actually plant vines ungrafted. It is illegal though to replant vineyards with ungrafted wines, but there are still winemakers doing this. I'm not naming names though. So those steep vineyards cannot be mechanized, so you have to hand harvest and most of the work in the vineyard actually has to be done by hand. In the cellar, most of the wineries don't use new wood. You would use large oak fooders or stainless steel. 
What makes the Mosel really interesting is that you have a big, big diversity of different styles. So you have more and more dry wines coming out of the Mosel, but when it comes to sweet wines, you have the whole range from Cabinet to Trockenbeeren aus Lesel. When it comes to geography, the Mosel is also very interesting. So 400 million years ago, during the Devonian period, the Mosel was actually at the bottom of an ocean. The soils were compressed as the plates moved around under enormous pressure and at very high temperatures and the Mosel slate developed. The slate is very fine and you can actually break it between your fingers. This has actually been a piece of slate from the Schatzhofberg from one of Egon Müller's vineyards. There's also rhyolith, which is a type of volcanic soil in the town of Urzig. And there are sand, marl, chalk and quartz soils in different parts of the Mosul. There are actually six different subregions in the Mosul, but the three most important when it comes to quality are one, Bernkastel, or the middle Mosul. Most of the really well-known vineyards are actually located in the middle Mosul. Famous vineyards include Urziger Würzgarten, Bernkasteller Doktor or Erdener Treppchen, for example. Most of the vineyards are steep slopes with red, blue or grey slate. And two of the top producers, for example, are Dr. Losen and JJ Prue. Number two is the Ruver, which is the smallest subregion in the Mosul and the vineyards are purely on Devonian slate soils. It is at a higher elevation and the wines are very fine and elegant. With 88% of Riesling, the Ruva actually has the biggest share of Riesling in the Mosul and two famous wineries from that part of the Mosul are for example Kartäuserhof and Maximin Grünhaus. So number three is the Saar. The Saar produces very age-worthy wines and it has 83% of Riesling planted in their vineyards. Arguably the most famous vineyard in the Mosel, the Schatzhofberg is located in the Saar and two famous producers from the Saar are Egon Müller and Van Volksen. So when it comes to climate, the Mosel is also very special. It's a very cool climate, a very cool continental climate and winemaking or vine growing is mostly only possible on the steep, steep slopes right next to the rivers. The steepness of the slopes actually maximizes the impact of the sun on the vine and the river moderates the climate and reflects some sunlight back into the vineyards. This is the reason why the Mosel is actually able to produce very complex, very flavorful wines at low alcohol levels and a lot of freshness. So the Mosel is a super interesting wine region, no question about it, but it is very difficult to farm those steep vineyards and make wine out of them. So quite a lot of the winemakers actually are not able to make as much money as they should in order to maintain the business that they are running. So it is down to you and me to drink more Mosel wine and make sure that this very special region is being conserved for the future. So thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, then please like it down here or down there, wherever. Subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments, questions or any suggestions on topics that I need to cover next time, please leave them in the comments. My question of the day is, what is your favorite Mosel wine? So please comment down below. I really enjoyed this, so I hope I see you again next time. Until then, stay thirsty.